Protein requirements uh, for bodybuilding. How much protein do you really need to maximize hypertrophy for bodybuilding? Uh, this one gets a lot of people butt hurt. <laughs> there, there are a lot of different opinions, and people get very passionate about their diets. Uh, you know, diets almost like religion to some people, and I think we need to remove ourselves from the actual bro science and and mythology and diet philosophy and keto this vegan that and look at the science and see what the science actually says imagine that science uh, so let's dig into this just a little bit um so protein requirements what studies say that you know the most recent scientific studies now keep in mind the stuff's always evolving uh, but now there are quite a few studies that you can find where they've actually looked at athletes and strength athletes and, you know, looked at what protein intake actually maximize hypertrophy. Um, and it seems to be, you know, all the studies that I have seen have settled around 1.7 grams per kilogram of body weight, which works out to be about 0 0.77, 0 0.8 grams per per pound for those of us in America, um, the, the metric system is foreign to us, uh, you know, so that seems to be, op, you know, the kind of the minimum requirement for strength training athletes. Now, keep in mind all these studies, they don't look at guys on PEDs, they're not looking at actual professional bodybuilders, um, but 1.7 is the grams per kilogram is the number that these studies seem to point to 1.2 grams per kilogram seems to be the minimum for the general population and i would doubt that the average american is getting 1.2 grams of actual quality protein in per day that's you know half a gram per pound of body weight i, I would be shocked if if they are maybe they are um i think most people are living off carbs and fat um, so there, another interesting thing, I found a study that looked at protein overfeeding, like going significantly over like 50% more than what the, the requirements, you know, uh, uh, up to almost two grams per pound of body weight. And, uh, you know, it found that body, bodybuilders, this, this study actually looked at um, bodybuilders, they were natural bodybuilders, um, um, that you know, they compared to the control group that was eating 1.7. They both had the same caloric intake, um, pretty much the, the same, um, you know, you know, the, the same quality of foods. Uh, but what, what they, you know, they were all, they were all eating low fat animal protein sources. So the same types of protein, but what they found that the, the people that were doing protein overfeeding, Actually, at the end of, I think it was a 12-week study, had improved body composition compared to those that ate the lower protein. Um, they, they had lower body fat levels. Um, they also, kind of surprising, uh, and this goes to disprove the, the thing that a lot of vegans and stuff will argue, is like, you're going to die of a heart attack if you eat a lot of protein. These guys, these people in the study... That were eating overeating protein, over consuming protein in excess, actually had improved <laughs> lipid markers at the end of the, stu the study. Their lipids got better; they were better than they were for the for the control group. So, um, and they also found no deleterious uh, uh, effects from protein overfeeding on the blood work. So that's that's kind of interesting. Um, I'll put the link to the study if you want to go look at it. Um, in the video description um it's pretty fascinating uh, my thoughts you know i you know the all protein overfeeding is pretty simple to explain that pro protein it's the thermic effect of food i mean your your body will expend 20 to 35 percent of the calories found in the protein to actually just process it um and your body does not want to use protein for fuel either gluconeogenesis is kind of like the last resort um, and it, 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 when it does, it's a costly process to convert, uh, proteins into you know, glucose. So, um, 
you know, pro protein, in, in a sense, you just end up burning off a lot of the excess, you know, th up to a third of it, uh, of the excess protein that you eat versus carbs or fat, which are going to be used for energy or stored as fat. Uh, carbs do have a bit of a thermic effect. I think it's something like 5 to 10% or maybe up to 15%. I don't recall off the top of my head, but not to the same degree as as protein. So that likely explains the improved body composition. Um yeah, now with that said, I wouldn't want to be in the bathroom when those people are eating like five, six hundred grams of protein are in there. That's a lot of protein to digest. It's really difficult for you to digest and and, and eat that much protein. Um, so applying these studies to bodybuilding, um, like I said, these studies don't factor in anabolic, um, you know, or anabolic steroids or performance enhancing. Uh, drugs and their effect on protein metabolism, which uh, you know in theory should be increased with with that with uh, with anabolic steroids. So likely you need more, you know, or you can take in more protein and put it to use. Uh, but you know, keep this in mind: it doesn't take that much protein to build muscle. Okay, so 25 grams a day of muscle protein synthesis is 20 pounds of muscle a year. Now, now, keep in mind, your body's constantly turning over protein, um, so that's it, a little bit misleading. But, you know, just, and, you know, also we never know when the body is going to build muscle, so we need constant protein throughout the day. But, you know, it, it, it doesn't take a lot. The moral of the story is it doesn't take a lot. Um, the, the issue is, uh, you know, you know, could you eat 50 grams of protein a day and build muscle? Maybe. But there's no way you could eat that much or that little and keep steady levels of amino acids in the body throughout the day. It's so that that's the issue. You just never know when the body's going to decide to build new muscle tissue. Um, so playing it safe, uh, it seems to the kind of accepted standard now is one gram to 1.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight for enhanced bodybuilders. Um, you know, you could probably get away with that 0.8 grams per pound, the 1.7 per kilogram. Um, but, you know, if you want to play it safe, we, we've, we've established that there's no risk for eating more protein. In fact, it seems to improve health and body composition. So let's err on the side of caution and eat a little bit more. Uh, you know, what's the problem there, right? Uh, you know, at the same time, we want to think of optimizing our diet you know there there is a threshold anybody who's eaten over 300 grams of protein knows it is really hard to eat more than that uh i i have gone as high as five six hundred before the only way i could choke down that much protein was to supplement in protein shakes i could not eat that much meat in a day it, it was just i'd be miserable it's a lot of fucking meat um so what type of protein sources do we want? Uh, we want quality protein, obviously, things that are actually going to be used by the muscle or the body for muscle protein synthesis, okay? Uh, we are concerned about the 20 amino acids that are, are available through, you know, that are, that are in the standard genetic code that the body can actually process. There are 20 to protogenic, uh, proteinogenic uh, aminos, but the body really just needs the 20 for muscle protein synthesis. Um, 11 of those uh, can be made by the body, and nine of those cannot. Those are your essential amino acids. So you have to get those from some source. Your body cannot make those on its own. Um, a quality protein, what I would consider quality protein, contains all 20 amino acids and nine e, uh, essential amino acids in um, optimal, um, you know, an optimal balance, complete amino acid chains. Uh, they're low in fat and low in carbohydrates. We want protein sources that are low in fat and low in, low in carbohydrates. Uh, uh, protein density per calorie. Ideally, we want almost as many of the calories that we can get from the protein to be from the protein. Uh, we don't want it from fat or carbohydrates. Um, the issue with protein powders, you know, a lot of people ask me about protein powders. I, they're okay in a pinch. Uh, there's a couple problems with them. Uh, one, they don't, don't release into the bloodstream slow enough. You know, when you, 
have a way. It's very fastly assimilated into the body. It's peak concentrations. I I think I've read it within like 30 minutes, and then then you know within an hour it's out of you. So you would have to eat again within an hour. Uh, to keep stable amino acid levels in the body. Whereas if you ate a chicken breast, you're going to be digesting that over probably a two and a half, three hour period of time. A piece of steak can stay in your body for, for 24 hours or more. Um, so that's the issue with protein powders. There are applications for them. Uh, maybe intra workout uh, or a post workout if you want a quick. Uh, uh, amino acid bath, um, you know, that, that might be, or if you're just in a pension on the road. Um, maybe maybe sip on it over a period of time. Uh, that would be a way to. Or there are slower acting protein powders such as casein. Um, you know, I'm not saying I'm not trying to shit all over protein powders, but real food is always better. And when we're constructing a bodybuilding diet, we're looking for optimal, not okay. All right, so protein powders are okay. Real meat is optimal. Keep that in mind. Um, vegetarian and vegan bodybuilding. Oh God. I, I almost dread even talking about this because people get their buttholes all in a clamp over this. I, I, I have a tendency to piss vegans off. Um, I don't care what anybody says. Vegan and vegetarian diet is not optimal for sports performance. It just isn't. It's just the science bears out that it's not, it, you know, Sure, you can do well with it, and there's, you know, this, you know, this and that documentary that shows people that have done well with it. Yes, 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 yes. You you can be an athlete and, and be a vegan, but we're talking about optimal here. Um, and, uh, you know, don't treat your diet like a religion, okay? It's not dogma. Uh, you know, a vegetarian and vegan diet is suboptimal, you know. Just like a keto diet is probably suboptimal for putting on size, and a carnivore diet is suboptimal for putting on size. Um, you know, it's not to say you can't. You can. Um, so, yeah, you know, with the thing with being vegan, you need you need to mix most vegetables and plants, or plant most plants plant foods do not have all the necessary amino acids for muscle protein synthesis there are a few that do um soy being one of them but uh you, you just can't get all the amino acids that you need in the right qual quantities without consuming excess carbs and fat um, it is very difficult and you have to mix sources you have to be very diligent about it you have to make sure you're mixing the vegetables together to get the amino acids um Soy does have complete amino acid chains, but it, you know it takes a lot. To, you know, let's 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 think about, um, you know, let's think about tofu, um, which is what people most people eat for, or soy protein powder. Um, a tofu using tofu as your protein source, it takes 940 calories of tofu to get 50 grams of protein. You only have to eat 200 grams of chicken breast to get 50 grams of protein. If you're trying to get in two, 300 grams of protein a day, you're going to get fat. <laughs> you just can't eat enough tofu. I mean, you're going to have to eat so much fucking tofu uh, to get the, the same amount uh, uh, that you would from chicken breast. You're just going to get fat. The same thing with other vegetables, you know, like mixing beans and rice. I, you know, it's going to take a shit ton of calories from beans and rice to get the amount of calories that you would get from a chicken breast. Um, also, a lot of plant products, I know people don't want to hear this, but they cause inflammation. Uh, uh, soy, a lot of people have allergies, you know, or sensitivities to soy, and it can cause inflammation. Uh, a lot of plant products also have phytoestrogens in it, and we know that estrogen is the enemy of being lean um, and bodybuilding. Uh, you know, you need some estrogen. Uh, but once again, we're talking about optimization and I, what is ideal. <clears throat> I would say it's almost impossible to achieve ideal body composition being, um, being a vegan or a vegetarian. Uh, it, you know, you're just going to have to eat protein powders and we already know that protein powders aren't ideal. Um, and, you know, one thing I would like to point out too is, you know, vegans and vegetarians that don't pay attention to their amino acid intake, 
I, we've all seen those vegans on YouTube that look like they're dying. You know, they look like cancer patients. Um, and it's because they're, they have a severe amino acid deficiency. And when you don't have amino acids in your body, essential amino acids, the ones that your body can't make on its own, what do you think happens? Your body starts breaking down its own tissue to get those amino acids. It's, it, it becomes catabolic. Not a good place to be. That's why the, the, a lot of, you'll see a lot of vegans that look like they're sick and dying. They're malnourished. Um, you know, I, I don't want to slam veganism as a choice. I get the ethical, um, I get the ethical reasons for it, but it is suboptimal for bodybuilding. Um, optimizing your diet. So what we want to do, we keep talking about optimization. We want quality animal protein sources for a bodybuilding diet. Choose animal protein sources that are easily digestible as well. You know, if something makes you feel sick and bloated and... You know, that's not good for pounding food to get big. Um, Equally distributed throughout the day, we want to eat five to six meals a day with balanced amounts of protein in it. You know, the same amount of protein in each meal and every two to three hours, and this will promote stable uh, amino acid levels in the body. Stay away from protein powders. We we talked about that already. Too fast digesting. A lot of people can't digest them well. They upset my stomach. If I have them, too many of them, even the way isolates still upset my stomach. Um, eat low fat, as low fat protein sources as you can you can get. Chicken breast, 99% ground turkey. White fish, 96% lean ground beef. Lean steaks. We're going to get our fats from other sources that give us essential fatty acids. Another thing your body can't make on its own. Um, you know, and, and promote better health. So we, we, we want to stay away from the saturated fats that are in meats uh, to keep our arteries from being clogged up. Um, and protein, we've established that we want to eat between 1 and 1.5 grams per pound of body weight. With less carbs, you probably need less protein because carbohydrates and a high insulin state in the body is muscle sparing, protein sparing, okay? Um, and you probably need a little more protein when you're eating, uh, less carbs. Okay. If you want to maintain muscle tissue, uh, you know, those are the basics in what we want to do. Thank you for watching my video. Hopefully this was helpful. Please like, and subscribe. Uh, I get a lot of people watching my videos, not many people subscribing. I really appreciate it. If you subscribe, it helps me with the YouTube overlords. Um, uh, I'm open to video suggestions. If you need, if you have ideas, things you want me to record, let me know. I'm happy. I'm also happy to answer questions in the comment section. Uh, please leave your comments below and questions below. And follow me on Instagram at Paul K. Barnett. Thank you. Have a great day.